Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, welcoming Bravo's newest heartthrob, Mark Milburn, from their new show, Timber Creek Lodge, to Behind the Velvet Rope. We're chatting all about the new season and what it's like to become a star overnight. Check it out. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and today's guest is someone who might be the nicest guy on the planet, but I hate him already, and Mark Milburn, do you know why I hate you? I don't. Um, do, shall I tell you? I'd like to hear. A, you're too good looking. We're, we're sitting here, who do you look like, I ask him, and he's like, I'm like James Marsden, Jamie Dornan, I'm like, can you say like, I don't know, somebody horrible? And then we were joking around. I had Stasi in here yesterday from Vanderpump Rules, the love of my life, and Andy was trying to hook you guys up, and I was just like, oh, this guy. Did she say um, anything about me? No, she, oh. she forgot about you the moment she walked in here. Are you kidding me? Nice guys finish last every time. It's true. <laughs> I'm nice. What told you? Why didn't you think I'm nice? Whatever. <laughs> Congrats on the new show, man. Thank you. I want your life. I want to live in Vancouver, have work at Timber Creek Lodge, go expedition hiking with people. Want to trade? Uh, your life sounds pretty good here. I did a little research on you before I came in. Sounds like you've had a good gig here. Yeah, it's not too bad, but, but I love I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to trade. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this show looks like a lot of fun. So tell me all about Timber Creek Lodge. What's everybody getting? Uh, it's, it's a wild experience. So essentially, we're a luxury lodge in the backcountry of Whistler. Uh, there was nine of us to start, eight about halfway through, and we have guests coming in, all types of walks of people, uh, from families to the ex-wives of rock to, to pretty much anybody that wants to come up to the lodge and go on an adventure. Uh, then we cater to them, we design the adventures, take them out, and go from there. So celebrities come? Uh, to a degree. I mean, like I said, like the family that came was just a totally chill California family that wanted to go on a family retreat. It's like most typical backcountry lodges. Anybody can go to them. It's, it is a little bit expensive, for sure, because you have helicopters if you're going heli skiing. But no, it's, uh, celebrities would be great. <laughs> Everybody's fun. So speaking of celebrity, you are entering a whole different world, man. When it comes to Bravo, it creates this unique level of fame. I was joking around that I could put up a picture of Brad Pitt, and it'll get less likes on social media than putting up a picture of someone who's popular on Bravo. Do you have any idea what you're getting into? I didn't until the other day when I was on the Andy Cohen show and my Twitter blew up because of the whole matchmaker scenario. And then I saw the impact that Stasi has and how many people like and dislike her. And my Twitter all of a sudden was just Stasi comments. So it's pretty incredible the reach that the Bravo world has. I would still like to have Brad Pitt's paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't we all? <laughs> When you look at this, when do you make the decision to get involved with a show like this? It, it's, you know, it's easy to think, all right, I'm going to do a reality show. I'm going to get exposure. I'm going to be on this enormous network. But not everybody can do it, can enjoy it. When did you make that decision? It wasn't so much that I was looking at getting on television as it was doing essentially a dream job. The opportunity to take clients out into the wilderness, do fit health and fitness essentially in nature, that's what I was pursuing. The byproduct of all of it was that it was a reality show. Uh, what's great for me is that I get to showcase that, that I get to showcase this adventure lifestyle. It's not like the other shows like Vanderpump and Montauk where it's partying, which anybody can do in any location in the world. We just get to add that little extra flavor that is exploring an adventure. I'm assuming now people are going to start recognizing you. Have you had while you're in New York? Because you're here all week. Any <laughs> yeah. crazy experiences yet? Um, not, not necessarily crazy. I was out for dinner the other day at Catch, meeting one of the guests from the show. And three girls came up to me and they're like, we loved your episode last night. And I was like, wow, so you're spoiled. <laughs> Dude, you're oh, it's <laughs> over. You're going to be so, you're wrecked. You realize oh, no. that, right? Like it's going to be, you'll never be able to go back to normality again. That, and somebody told me that, but you know what's great is with my passion being mountaineering and adventure, once I leave the ski hill and I'm in the backcountry, nobody knows me. Oh, and you have the humility and the charm to go with it. <laughs> I'm never walking in a bar together with you. So I'll be like, that girl's gorgeous. Come up to her. She'll be like, who's your friend? I'm like, kill me right now. <laughs> I've, I've never been approached in a bar until that other night when somebody's like, I saw you on the show. But that's all they said was, I saw you on the show and we love it. And I was like, what does that mean about me? <laughs> like, you're not actually here to pick me up. You're just telling me that you enjoy the show. So it's, it's an interesting scenario. I'm grateful for the opportunity, but it's definitely an interesting scenario. Does fame scare you at all? Fame is a tricky drug, man. Does it scare you? It's been an interesting journey, especially watching how 
the people, like the troll aspect of Twitter and social media and how there can be this extreme hatred towards somebody you've never met. Like, I've never hated someone I didn't know. <laughs> I never woke up in the morning and was like, God, I just hate this person I've never met. So that is different. What is amazing is my last episode, I disclosed that I went through a sexual assault when I was living in yep. New York about 10 years ago. And I've gotten so many messages from men and women just saying, thank you for being open about that. And I reply to those guys instantly. And I love the fact that they have the strength to tell me that. And technically banding together, we're just going to make it a better world, a more like a smarter world. Right. And so that's a cool thing with this so-called fame. You have a platform now and you just touched on it where you're going to be able to share what's important to you. Has that entered your mind where you've said, okay, I have a charity that I enjoy, or there's a philanthropic purpose that I'd like to come aboard. Have you started thinking about the good that you can do with now being on television? I, I didn't so much until that experience. I've always loved kids. And so I've always gone to Switzerland and worked with kids and teaching outdoor education. But now I'd like to take it to that next step. Like I'd like to put more adventure education into the school system so that kids are getting out in nature. So that's one aspect. And I just think that what we're going through is, and I talked to Stasi about this, and Sheena was the amount of bullying that you go through through technology that, like I said, people we've never met before. And I think that there's a big platform to, again, stand behind bullying and try and get rid of it. I mean, that's the biggest war I think we have. I was looking at, I did some research on YouTube, by the way, and I was looking at some of the stuff you do at Timber Creek Lodge. And it's, I, I, be like terrified to do one tenth of what you're doing. Do you ever get worried about any of the stuff you do? Have you ever had any crazy client experiences where somebody's gotten lost in the woods or fallen off a mountain? I mean, anything crazy? For, fortunately, this season. <laughs> He's like, no. Yeah, fortunately, Thank this God. season, no, no. Uh, I mean, we were skiing with Jimmy from episode two, and his binding blew off his ski. But Jimmy's a big guy. He just he was an ex lacrosse player, and he took it like a champ. Uh, stuff I'd, happens. I'd be crying like <laughs> yeah. a bitch. I'd be the guy on national TV being like, I hurt myself more, my knee hurts. <laughs> it is, of course, like a fear, but no. I mean, same when we went heli skiing, the avalanche conditions were perfect. So we didn't have to worry about where we were going. Uh, there's always a chance. That is for sure. And I'd like to see and if we have our future seasons. I'd like to push the envelope on the adventures we do because the fear factor is kind of exciting for us. And at the same time, it gives us a little bit more to talk about after the show. I know you'd mentioned that you see this show as an avenue to be able to display the lifestyle and the career that you've built. But now that other doors may open for you, do you think, okay, maybe a career in entertainment is something I might want to pursue? I might want to do hosting or I might want to be an actor. Um, uh Absolutely. I love doing... That was a good, honest answer. I thought you were going to give me the whole, no, nah, I'm good being a ski at Timber Creek Lodge. I like the honesty. No, I 100% would like to get into entertainment. There, there's definitely people I admire, like The Rock, and I really admire what Ryan Seacrest has accomplished, and people like yourself. Like you said, you had Did a... Did you journey. really just put me in the same category? Well... Dude, <laughs> I don't hate you any longer. You can have Stasi. We're now friends now. Go well, ahead. Well, it's just impressive. Like you said, you have a history in finance. You left finance to pursue your journey, right? And I think I've spent the last 10 years focusing on health and fitness and becoming an expert in that. And I love it. And I'm super grateful for that platform. But I'd rather share what I know now to a much larger audience and inspire people through different means. And entertainment is one of the best means to do that. Have you tried before? Have you ever made a trek into acting or hosting or anything of that nature? Not, not so much. Like I've, had, I've done some acting stuff before and then I was modeled when I was younger, but I wanted to focus. I had my dreams that I wanted to knock off. I wanted to be a track cyclist and race. I wanted to go to the Olympics and I missed that, unfortunately. I wanted to open gyms. I've wanted to be a gym owner since I was a kid, like 13, and I got to do that. So now I'm at that stage in my life where I'm like, now's the chance. Now is my time to try this new journey. I always feel like with every show, and it's, I am sure Bravo in their casting process understands this is how it's going to work. Everybody gets their role, essentially. You're the hated person. You're the troublemaker. You're the heartthrob. You're definitely the heartthrob of Timber Creek Lodge. <laughs> Have you embraced that role? Because that's essentially how you're going to be branded. You're going to be the heartthrob. It's it's not a bad role to have, for sure. The I started off as the most hated character on the show right off of day one. I mean, myself and Nikita. But it's fun. Like Our journeys have both been like this. The episodes to come, who knows what people are going to think. But as of right now, I feel like I'm in a good position, that people appreciate what I went through. They can Some people can connect with it. I don't mind being the heartthrob. That's a, that's a <laughs> nice, you know, like I said, there's people like Ryan Reynolds and other people that have succeeded as being heartthrobs. I'd like to follow in their paths as well. Is it weird seeing yourself on TV? Is it? I, I would be breaking <laughs> down every blemish on my face. I'd be like, God, that guy is the worst. Oh, that's me. He's the worst walk ever. 
Do you break yourself down as you're watching episodes? <laughs> I love that question. Being a guy in health and fitness and then coming from modeling, I've always struggled with body dysmorphia. And so that's that concept essentially of never being happy with where you're at. And I remember like two months ago, before the show came out, I was in the gym and I sat there and I took a photo, of course, like a dumb gym selfie. And I looked at the photo and I was like, I finally did it. Like, I'm happy where I'm at right now. And I didn't expect to have that realization at that point at all. And I, a friend of mine is a star on iZombie, and we've been talking back and forth about that concept and when are we ever going to be happy enough? And so we kind of both just said, like, why not today? And so when you watch yourself on TV, I'm like, of course, I look dumb in that picture. Or like, oh, like I could be more ripped there. But at the end of the day, it's like, I'm the one who's got this opportunity. I've worked hard. I took the risks. And now I should reap the rewards. I had a question for Stasi yesterday, and I asked her from season one to now, how has she changed? And her answer to me was she's become more self-aware. <laughs> Did you walk into this journey and say, regardless of whatever happens, one season or 10 seasons, if I become a big star because of the show, did you ever say to yourself, here's what I hope Mark Milburn takes away from this experience? It's really funny because I went out with her after the show and a couple other people from NBC. And I asked her the same question because I was super curious as well. And yeah, I would like to walk away one, two, ten seasons from now, always being grounded and always, like I said, I will always, as soon as we finish the season, go to Switzerland and disconnect from it all and go work with kids. It's, it's the most rewarding job. It pays horribly, <laughs> but it's the most rewarding job. And I think that that's the humility that can exist in this world. I don't think you need to get carried away with this fame or being able to be noticed. I think that there's a lot of reward and positivity that you can do. And I see that with her. Like, Stasi and Sheena were really cool when people come up. They're always going to take a photo with them. And you see other celebrities who are like, I'm just too busy for this. Right. So it's amazing. You may watch them on TV and get this perspective of them where you just don't, you hate them. But in real life, when you meet them and you spend those five minutes with them, it, it, they surprise I, you. I said exactly that. We were talking and as soon as we got off camera. I'm like, the funny thing is, Stasi, and I've interviewed her multiple times, she's the nicest person. She's incredibly smart, like mm -hmm. charming. It is funny to see because people do have that perception. And one of the things I was talking to her about, I'm going to ask you is, now that people see you on television, they build up a perception of who you are. So if you are at a restaurant and three girls come up to you, they think of Mark Milburn from Timber Creek Lodge. And that could be a completely different person than who you are in real life because of an edit or because of a scene or whatever. Is it, do you, have you had any difficulty and are you nervous about having difficulty that people are going to know you because of what they perceive versus who you really are? Uh, it's, a, a, again, a really solid question. It's no different than people who aren't on television but have an Instagram account and they're building this fake persona of what their life it's would be metaphor. like. Whereas, like, I don't go heli skiing every day. I would love to go <laughs> heli skiing, but my Instagram makes it look like I get to. And the other thing is, like, your Instagram in our industry is, like, you're supposed to be a single guy your whole life, and it's like you die single. Well, I hope to have relationships as I go through my life. But if I put that on Instagram, it's faux pas in the industry. So yeah, no, I think, I think it is a tougher part, and you're gonna have, I'm gonna have to deal with it as I go through this journey. But at the same time, I can't, you know, I can't let what people think of me change how I think of myself. What's everybody getting with the rest of the season? Ooh, drama. <laughs> it, it wouldn't be Bravo if it wasn't. I guess the biggest thing I kind of want to say about our show versus a lot of other shows is. I've always wanted people to be able to connect with the experiences we had. We didn't sit there getting told what to do. We just got thrown challenges constantly. So it's like, hey, here's your next group of guests and you have 12 or 24 hours to prepare. And we're a mountain lodge. It's not like I can go into town and Nikki can buy just a lobster in Whistler. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not the easiest thing. So when people see the drama on our show, it happens. When you see us cry, it's real. Or when you see us upset, it's actually, no one told us to be upset in that situation. And so it's really important that when the audience does it, don't look at us and judge us for human beings, but instead, look at the situation. How would you react in that situation? Can you, can you feel a situation in your life that you've been in? And that's what I hope they take away from our reality show. You mentioned I was in the financial services industry for years, and one of the toughest things, and people don't understand it, and you're dealing with the same thing, servicing people is really tough. <laughs> it can be such a pain in the ass. Are there moments where as much as you love what you do, you're like, God, I cannot deal with these clients anymore. I'm up to here with this. <laughs> we, we just had an episode with that exact scenario. And, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I was on a show, I don't think I would have ever done this. But we had a group of clientele that were just rude. And they were just not there for the same reasons that everyone else was there. 
And I lost my cool and I ended up gutting to do what everybody in customer service wants to do. And I called them out on it. So yeah, we get sick of it. Like I, I go on and I go on a vacation because I want to experience the other culture that I go to. I don't leave Vancouver to bring Vancouver with me somewhere else. And that was what the guests were doing. And so all of us kind of sat in this situation being like, this is the worst part of customer service right now. You're bringing Texas to Whistler. Like Whistler is amazing on its own. You don't need to bring Texas there. Why don't you come in and enjoy it? So yeah, no, I, I feel your pain that you went through. <laughs> How weird was it when the cameras first came? Like, it, it is, people don't understand, even when you do something like this, the key to being a, a good interview, and one day I'll actually become that, <laughs> is you have to make the guests that you're talking to forget that there are cameras there. They have to be in the moment with you. For a reality star, for, for someone on a docu-series, you have to essentially forget the cameras are there. Was it difficult in the beginning when they're all following you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we get out of the, we showed up from the ski hill, Colson and I, and you kind of walk into the house and all of a sudden you look around and you're just like, there is a lot of cameras in here. Like, I can't take a piss without them following But me. this is what's so wild is, it's kind of an experience I wish everybody could go through so they could just understand it. It makes you, it definitely develops a strange form of confidence in yourself. Because day one, everyone's hiding behind stuff to get changed and peeing. And by day two, literally everyone after two days was like, door open, people are in the shower, other people are getting their hair done, somebody else is putting their clothes on. Like, you just get used to having 25 people with cameras and night vision cameras on you at all times, and you just kind of forget that they're there. And what's even weirder is when the show is done, you kind of look for them because you're, like, getting home and you're like, all right, like, no one cares now. It's <laughs> awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank it's you. fun series so far, and... I love, I, you know, people, and we were just talking, like, unless you've been to Whistler or Montremblant or a true ski town, ski resort, like, not like, you know, crappy stuff like the Poconos, but something like really exquisite, you don't really understand the culture that comes with that type of environment. It really is its own little insulated world. And I love how your show brings that to life. So congrats on the show, man. And Thanks stay humble because you're going to be a big deal. So stay <laughs> humble.